Hello all, um, I thought I'd make a video, um, I had a message from um, Liam, a new member, um, not Cat and P, um, but uh, Liam, who said um, that, um, sorry, uh, I'm reading it off screen, is there a chance I could send a watch list of the currency pairs um, I all, well, I work towards so um, he can start plotting uh, charts and getting a general understanding and put everything we talk about and discuss uh, together right so um, what we generally want to do when we are looking at the fundamentals is we're looking towards the fundamental analysis spreadsheet first of all and generally this applies to a risk on scenario so if risk was on you know then this would be the ranking so what we're looking to do is we're looking to trade you know the the, the stronger currencies which is the australian dollar at the moment the united states is number two new zealand is number three and canada number four so it would it would be pretty much the commodity currencies against uh five six sevens and eights um eight being the weakest and uh but at the, and, and what we what we really really want to do is is choose the uh, the pairs that are diverging the most, the currencies that are diverging the most. So you would want to choose one versus eight, or two versus seven, or three, or one versus uh, six, for example, or two versus eight, two versus seven, two versus six. So that's how we kind of choose our currency pairs. So uh, I should say, but we're in a risk off environment and in a risk off environment at the bottom is a, is a note so um, what tends to strengthen are the red currencies so red being the Jap Japanese yen and the Swiss and the Swiss franc but also what's not on here is that the um, the commodity currencies which are the New Zealand dollar um, Canadian dollar and Australian dollar will tend to weaken in a um, in a uh, in a risk off environment so uh let me just go to the uh, room i think it was it was earlier today and i'm no, sorry discussion room and it was golden green had put together a uh, a slide a couple of slides earlier in, in the day and uh this really kind of captures where money typically goes and i say and again i'm going to use the word typically likely you know it's a probabilistic nature as not all risk off and risk on scenarios are the same yeah so we have to think a bit deeper about what you know risk off environment and how it's going to affect you know uh well where money is going to flow into but typically what happens is is that in a risk on environment equities so for example stocks go up and in a risk off they go down which is what is happening right now um commodities oil copper tend to go down um which is basically what's happening with oil in a risk on scenario they go up and so on and so forth yeah so again currencies uh whatever high beta means australian dollar new zealand dollar the cad and probably emerging markets em um, in a risk on scenario they go up in a risk off scenario they go down um, and so on and so forth. So actually I might take this um, and add this to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet somewhere or if somebody um, who has access uh, could do that for me, that would be brilliant because I'm not necessarily the best at spreadsheets, but this pretty much, you know, um, shows you exactly what typically happens yeah, in a risk on and risk off scenario. So thank you for that golden green. Now, how does that relate to um, uh, to pairs so what Liam wants to know is you know what typically happens uh, with a currency pair so how do we pick currency pairs so if we know that there is a risk um, you know the pairs that we should be trading let's look at for example let's go through the list and, and, and understand why I've got these tabs as red yeah um, and some of them that obviously haven't got tabs or if there was any green tabs right so Aussie CAD. Now we're looking for divergences. First of all, they're both commodity currencies in a risk-off environment. Do you want to even look at this currency pair? 
you know, when it comes to uh, trading fundamentally. No, because it, it's a bit more difficult to read. Yes, you can probably look at this technically. You can look at any chart from a technical analysis perspective, you know, but from a uh, fundamental perspective, it's not something that I'm, you know, I'm even looking at and trying to guess. So it's not on my list. Now, Aussie Swiss would be because Aussie is a uh, is is affected by the risk on a risk off sentiment, and so is the Swiss franc, and they're diametrically opposed. Yeah. So what then I'd be looking for is any setups to the either the long or the short side. Yeah. Now going back to the Aussie CAD, that doesn't mean that I would never ever ever trade the Aussie CAD because what we're actually looking for in currencies is we're trading divergences. So. Is if, if we're in a risk on scenario now, let's say, for example, in a risk on scenario, but the Australian dollars economy is doing really well. But the Canadian dollar, for some reason, or the um, Canada's economy isn't doing so well. They, they're cutting rates. They've got low inflation, etc., etc. Yet the Australian economy is doing really well. It's growing. Inflation is at the 2% target. There's a divergence there between, you know, uh, where uh, the um, uh, the countries are in their economic cycle, inflation and interest rate cycle. So there's a divergence there. At the moment, there's no divergence yeah, between the two currencies. Both currencies are struggling. Both currencies are commodity currencies. So, you know, both currencies are cutting rates, etc. So there's no divergence there. Aussie Swiss, there is because typically money should go into the Swiss franc in a risk off scenario. Hence, we've seen from pretty much the beginning of the year or, or at least from uh, February when the coronavirus really has decided to, you know, enter into the um, the news uh, uh, cycle. I mean, it was always there, but, um, you know, into, into the mainstream, I guess, um, you know, you can see what's typically happened with price downtrend. Uh, same thing with the uh, Aussie uh, yen downtrend yeah um aussie so again aussie new zealand we wouldn't look at the aussie, aussie new zealand because like the aussie cad they are um uh pairs that are uh that are uh, competing yeah um aussie dollar dollar sorry australian dollar the us dollar now this would be a pair that i would be looking towards because typically typically the um the uh, the US dollar can be used as a safe haven, yeah? So outside of the yen and the Swiss franc, the Australian dollar tends to do what weaken in a risk off environment and the US dollar will strengthen in a risk off in a risk um, off environment or tends to anyway, or can do. So that's on my list to short. CAD Swiss, exact same thing. So CAD Swiss, Canadian dollar being a um, a uh, uh, a commodity currency, Swiss franc being a risk-off currency, diametrically opposed. That's on the list. Uh, CAD yen on the list. Now CAD, um, sorry, Swiss yen is is on the list, and it's the reason why it's on my list is because out of the two, even though they're not necessarily diametrically opposed, the the yen um, out of the two risk-off currencies will. I say will but they they again typically tend to or is more likely to be the stronger out of the two again it depends on the risk off situation if it's risk off that doesn't affect the swiss but does affect the yen then obviously that's something you know you, you, that's 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 different if you know what i mean but with an overall risk off perspective with the virus the yen should typically strengthen you know, in this environment. So you've seen before the coronavirus, then after the coronavirus, you've had, you know, shorting opportunities. Um, uh, so any kind of pullbacks to these levels and above that level is where I'd be looking to potentially get short. Euro Swiss, I'm in this trade at the moment. Um, I'm also in the, uh, the, the CAD Swiss from all the way up here as well. So I'm still holding this trade from, from up here. Um, but Euro Swiss got in at this. This is a nice stop hunt here. So at the time, it was just looking for stop hunts around supply zones and looking for short trades. So um, certain targets have been met, and now it's just a case of holding the trade and seeing how far it can go. So um, 
uh, well, a little bit anyway. So a little bit was taken off at two to one, a little bit was taken off at, um, at, at fair value, and then a little bit was taken off at the 80% level. So now I've got a really small position left in the market, can't lose. So let's see how far it can go to the downside. But from a, um, a, a pairs perspective, there we are. It's pretty much clear that the Swiss franc is the risk off currency that to buy and the, and the euro at the moment isn't. Euro pound, not fantastic. Well, it's not clear to me anyway. Um, it might be clear to somebody else, but not to me um, which way you should be buying or selling. There really was a really nice um, stop hunt, daily stop hunt, um, and maybe a weekly one as well above the market pattern. But um, uh, from a fundamental perspective, um, I, I'm steering clear of the euro uh, pound. It's not one on my radar. Uh, euro yen on the radar. Nice trade from up here. I didn't manage to get an entry here. I was a bit annoyed about that because um, I was watching this and I didn't get in. But look and look, look at pretty much what happened again. The yen being the what risk off currency and uh, at a nice supply zone, um, top of a supply zone anyway. And uh, look at what's happened. So you know it's pretty much just understanding which direction you should trade um so that's on the list as a sell the red represents sell so euro dollar euro dollar sell as well up into a supply zone very nice trade that i know a few traders are in this at the moment dollar being um the stronger out of the two again pound aussie um not too sure fundamentally which one should you should be buying or selling personally so that's not on the list same thing with pound cad uh pound swiss obviously the swiss franc should be uh the one to buy so looking for any kind of supply zones um and what makes it easy i mean i do have demand zones here to be fair i do have demand zones on here but the only reason why i have demand zones on here is is to kind of just for educational purposes to show traders where demand zones actually are if, if i had my own chart um i wouldn't really put demand zones on here um there'd really be no need to but you know you can clear your chart up if you really wanted to um just by having the direction or the, or the supply zones that you want or the demand zones that you want and that that kind of indicates the direction you should really be trading in sorry pound yen um i'm in this trade um from around here um this high around this uh um this level here so let's see what actually happens uh, i think this is potentially should want to roll over again with the yen being a risk off currency uh pound new zealand again new zealand being a commodity currency the pound we're not not sure it's not clear so don't trade it well say i can't say not to trade it but it's not clear to me so it's not on my list uh, not on my watch list uh pound dollar again it's on the list because um of the um the, the dollars strengthening strengthening nature if you know what i mean is they're, they're, they're the best of the worst or out of these two anyway so again supply zone and then it's uh coming down slightly um new zealand cad two commodity currencies not interested in that new zealand swiss i would be interested in this i think there was a bit of a stop hunt at the top here which i managed to miss um i think it was on monday yeah i had my alert set here and i think the stop hunt happened over in in the early hours of the morning so i didn't I didn't manage to get in on that one but that would have been one um two uh well one commodity currency one risk off currency uh same thing new zealand yen short trade new zealand dollar similar thing where you've got um a commodity currency which doesn't tend to do well in the dollar etc dollar cad i guess that that could be on on the buy list as well it could have been on the buy list it did react off of this demand zone here the top end of this demand zone gone up to maybe a couple of hundred pips as well so that could have been a decent trade um really truly actually should be on my list to buy when i think about it um dollar swiss is not on my list even though it's gone in its direction simply because you've got two currencies kind of competing two risk off currencies yes the swiss should typically be uh, stronger than the dollar in a risk off environment but there are better pairs to trade so i didn't include that um in it even though that was a very nice you know move demand zone wise uh and dollar yen dollar yen 
so we've got um, it didn't quite it's actually no it must have did, did, did let's just delete that yeah so there was a demand zone there so you can see it did react but again is that on my list of things to trade note the reason why is because the yen should typically strengthen over the over the um, the dollar um, but also as well um, if I'm going to buy the, the yen sorry if I'm going to buy the yen then it's not going to be against the dollar I'm going to buy the yen against what is typically known as a weaker currency so at the moment the CAD the Australian dollar and the uh, New Zealand dollar so that's pretty much how it goes and the dollar itself has come down to this really nice um, a really nice uh, uh, demand zone and has uh, and uh, really has reacted quite nicely to that. Now we don't know how far this is going to continue, but you can see with the dollar strength at this demand zone confluence, nice fair value between the low and the high. And then we've had a few days now. We've got some obviously some news coming out, but um, that's for another video. But that's how to uh, uh, really pick, you know, how we pick our pairs. And uh, depending on obviously the situation fundamentally, these will change, you know, um, depending on the risk on, risk off, what's happening locally and stuff like that. So every, I would say probably if you can, if you can every day, you know, look at, you know, your, your, your currency watch list. Um, also look at the uh, fundamental analysis spreadsheet uh, when we, um, when we, uh, you know, uh, when this if, if this changes pretty much looking on a daily basis I need to update this as well just to make sure all the numbers are correct but at the end of the day um, even if the numbers aren't correct it we're in a risk off environment so the yen and the Swiss franc and really the United States should still be the ones to buy even if this is slightly you know the numbers slightly are um, maybe off a little bit all right hopefully that helps and take care so if what I'm saying resonates with you, why not check out trading180.com? There is a selection process to trade my supply and demand zone forex strategy. I'm only looking to work with uh, individuals with the right mindset, you know, who are hard working as well. So um, check that out and access really for less than one pound a day. This Some of the strategies in here are not for beginners. So if you don't know what supply and demand is, please check out all of my supply and demand videos. I have hundreds of videos on YouTube, so you can check that out first. Um, guys, take care and until the next video, have a good one.